making $493 trading the S&P and the Dow. Welcome on in to a new trade recap. We are continuing the recaps from yesterday. I just thought it'd be easier to consolidate these to the different account, which they were taking on the $25,000 account. And um, they're trading essentially the S&P and the Dow, which they're not, we're not, we're not trading individual stocks. We're trading the average. So Dow first, and then the S&P next. The Dow, I'll tell you this again, um, kind of, I, I was I've kind of been off my game. I think that last month and the recent kind of just, you know, win rate that's been pretty tough under 50%, which by the way, we're up nicely on the month, but the win rate hasn't been the best is kind of mentally been dragging on me. And so I took this Dow trade and I did not size. I sized incorrectly for my account. I, um, I should have at least doubled my size on this trade. Uh, maybe triple the size if I think about it now, but I just entered it. And before you, I could realize it, it was too late. And I was like, I'm not going to add another trade here. I'm going to just leave it as is. And it is what it is. And that's what I decided to do. Um, cause I was like, you know, it's my mistake for not sizing properly. Initially, I'm not going to backtrack and, and, uh, double down or whatever, just in case I'm off. Like it's a sign that maybe I shouldn't have been, you know, in there in the first place either way. So Dow trade me, we essentially made a hundred dollars on this trade. What was the trade? Um, this is on the 25 K account. So that's usually my, you know, that would be too small uh, of, of a trade, but for my, my sizing, but that's, the, it is what it is. So what was the trade we were looking for? Uh, very nicely. And very simply, I was looking for a breakout above this area of consolidation right here. Now this did occur. I'll tell you this right now. I put my stop loss under the wick of this candle right here. Okay. So that's right where my stop loss was. I got in on this candle right here. We did get very close to stopping out and then eventually went for it. I can't tell you how many times I have had in the past where this trade comes in, undercuts me and then goes. This time we got lucky. I'll be honest. We got lucky and it just didn't undercut me held my level, came back up, broke it again, and went for it. And a very big move uh, in that. I was able to sell out into here, but I'm happy with the move, and it is what it is. The next trade was on the S&P 500. Back in here. This one was awesome. This one was awesome because if I go to my executions, I actually scaled out. I tried to practice a little bit of scaling out, believe it or not. And um, it worked out. Like, look at that. Look at those little scales. Beautiful, beautiful. Almost all the, almost, almost top ticking it. Got pretty close, I'll tell you that. Uh, and I'll explain why, because there's a level that I had in mind. The Dow, by the way, I should go back to this. The Dow, by the way, uh, reason why I like the trade, because it was a consolidation right underneath the prior all-time highs. So Dow breaking the all-time highs. Yes, sir. That was the thrust. I was looking for the momentum on the bigger time frames and the momentum on the shorter-term time frames, the five-minute chart. We got it. When, when both those combine, we are looking at a really good quality setup. So that's what I like to trade. Um, so back to the S&P. <laughs> you had what was funny because big down day yesterday and this breakout to the upside starts to occur. And I'm like, oh shit, you know, this, this is interesting because now we're, we're, you know, we're tracing back the entirety of yesterday's downside, which we thought was kind of big we could squeeze out. So my mindset here was, I don't, I don't trade like, Oh, we, you know, we're going to squeeze out. So I'm going to go long. I don't do that randomly, but if I can pair a thesis like that up with a chart, I mean, I'm going to take it. So here's my breakout point and here's my little consolidation right in here. And then I got in on this candle, which just so happened to have a little thrust of volume right there. Nothing amazing, but good compared to the prior candles. Cause it was also near midday. So we like what we see. We get in and we made a push. Now, where were my targets? I scaled out at a couple or well, two key spots. Well, not really one key spot. And then the, the second, the take, the final take profit was a key spot. The second scale was just kind of random just because I was up a lot. So I was like, okay, I'm going to take some off. Go to the one hour chart and I charted it out and I'm like, okay, let's go back. I actually go to the 30 minute chart. I'm going to mark two levels, this high and I'm marking this high. It's funny. The high of the day just so happens to be the exact all-time high on the S&P from the pre-market hours on Thursday morning. That was just under that level was where my ultimate target was. My first target was here, just below that level. Why? Because that was the area 
that we bounced back and then rejected hard yesterday morning after the market opened off CPI. So two key areas of inflection points or whatever you want to call them. And that's where I put my first sell. So I did scale out a piece. If you go back in here, my first scale out was if I had 0 0.42 lots or whatever, I scaled out point well, like about a fourth of it. And then I scaled out another fourth and then I scaled out the rest at the end. That's kind of how I went about it. Um, and uh, the second scale out in between kind of was, I don't want to say random, but yeah, sorry. It was this, this is the first scale out right here. Then it was this one. Then it was this one. The second scale out was in between. It was pretty much just like we were in here and I was like, yo, we're like halfway to the, t the, t the area I'm looking for ultimately, but I'm going to just take a piece of this off because we're up nicely. And let me, this is a, this is a good risk reward trade, by the way, a really fucking good risk reward trade. Why? Because where do I put my stop loss on this trade? I put my stop loss right under here. Sorry, here, these lows. So it was like, either we're going to go or we ain't going to go and we're going to get stopped out pretty fast and we're going to be out and it's not going to be a big deal. We're going to lose a little bit and that's it. So this was like well above a two to one risk reward if you do the math. So if I, if I pull the math out now, obviously I did not sell all of my position at the top, but if you do like an average of where I sold, I, you, my average would be up somewhere up, up in here uh, in terms of my average exit. But if I got in here around that level, Stop loss under there. I mean, you're talking about from my entry to my average exit over a 3.5 to one. And to my ultimate target, we got about a five to one risk reward, which is awesome. It doesn't always work out that way that you can see a chart that looks that clean. But this is when I, I felt we had a really good risk reward set up. And um, it's not surprising that it was the biggest winner that I've had in a while because this one made about 391. One shot, one shot. And I was risking under well under 200. I was risking like a hundred bucks or something like that on the trade. So beautiful risk reward setup. I like what I got. And uh, that's the deal. All this is track with Tradezilla on this account, by the way, let me just log into this. We are now sitting at 25,772 dollars. Um, so we're, we made a little bit of a bounce back from where we were and uh, you know, Start at 25K. I got it close. I got it close to 27K, which is like passing phase one. And then I went on a, on a drawdown or went on a pretty bad red streak. And now we're coming, we're trying, to, trying to build it back. But the importance, I think, again, back to this 44% win rate, the, the importance of managing risk, because I don't think there's a lot of people out there who, you know, or at least I know myself. And I can tell you right now, me about a year ago or two years ago or even beyond, right? definitely would not be this profitable for, you know, given the sizing that I'm trading uh, with a 44% win rate, just wouldn't be the case. I'd be like maybe barely green if anything, and probably red, probably red, but we're managing risk really well. Average winners, 181, average losers, 85. And that's like across sizing with a 10 K account and a 25 K account. So they are different sizing that, and they should have sized the Dow trade differently, but that's the deal. I'll leave a link to Tradezilla where I track everything below this video if you're interested. And other than that, thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for the next recap. But uh, that's all we got for now. Peace.